only more than half, a little more than half, right? Two thirds is more than one half. So sometimes bills barely pass, right? And two thirds is gonna be very difficult to get. But I see what you're saying, if they if it gets a closer already then. You need 66. But you would need 66. All right, Speaker of the House. Let's talk about what does he do? He influences the likelihood of what? What does he do? Um, the bills. Of bills passing. He influences the likelihood of bills passing by his power to assign bills to committees. committees. If he favors the bill, he will, he will, it will be assigned to committees most likely to pass it. If he doesn't <coughs> like the bill, if he dislikes it, he will assign it to, some, to a committee most likely to fail it. Everybody go with the Speaker of the House and his involvement in the legislative process. All right, standing committees are the ones that they give the bills to. They conduct hearings to investigate the merits of the bill. They bring in what? Experts. Such as what from interest groups? Lobbyists. Lobbyists. We'll talk about lobbyists later on, but they basically represent the interest groups' concerns and interests. They're usually very... They have expertise in that particular area. Like the NRA's lobbyists are very good at gun rights. PETA's lobbyists are very good at animal rights. So they usually get brought in by the committees to talk about a bill. They can amend the bill in committee. They can debate a bill. Um, it releases the bill to the floor. What is required? A simple majority from the committee. A majority is required from the committee. There's more than half. What's another way to release a bill? From a committee, discharge petition. Forces committees to release a bill to the House floor. But that petition needs to be signed by how many of the members of the House? 218, majority. You can put majority or you can put 218. Discharge petition only happens in which House? Oh, it doesn't happen where? It doesn't happen in the Senate, it only happens in the House. Once a Senate committee kills a bill, the bill is dead. There's no resuscitation. Oh wait, I'm sorry. One House of Representatives requires 218. Majority. House Rules Committee, after a bill is released from committee, it goes to the House Rules Committee. This is the House Rules Committee currently. Very powerful, powerful group. Look over here, who's this? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Of course he's gonna put himself on the House Rules Committee, right? Very powerful. So they can sign the date, the debate time, the types of amendments that can be made, and they can even refer the bill to the House, the committee as a whole. Is it more efficient or less efficient than the actual House? More. More, more efficient. So made of all members of the House of Representatives only with less what? What's the difference? Rules. rules. Only with less rules. That's why it's more efficient. The committee as a whole is not shackled by all the procedures and rules of the House of Representatives they are able to pass legislation more, more efficiently would be the thing that you need to put in there. They're able to pass legislation more efficiently. The House Rules Committee influences the likelihood of bills passing. If they don't like the bill, how much time do they give it? Little or no time for debate. They give it little or no time. What types of amendments? A lot or very little? Few. Few. There are little, there are, there are also allowed little to no amendments to be made. Or they can send it to the actual house and not send it to where? The, the committee as a whole, right? Because they know if it goes to the committee as a whole, there's a bigger chance that it's going to pass. Also allow little to no amendments to be made. What happens in, to the bill when it reaches the Senate and House floor? Amendments can be made, changes can be made to it. What is this? Congressmen exchange support for each other's bill. What do we call that? Log rolling. Log rolling. This one word, log rolling. Or writers or earmarks can be attached to a bill to make it easier to pass. So you need to put here pork barrels. Pork barrels spelled over here pork barrels, the things that you attach to a bill, something extra. Hopefully you guys understand those cartoons later on when you're looking when you're studying. 
pork barrels are federal funds for a local project that is attached to a bill. All right, I'm looking for a specific word here. This usually benefits a congressman's what? Constitu constituency. Constituency. His home district, or in case of a senator, his home what? Senators, what's the senator's constituency? The entire state, right? Entire state. So this usually benefits a congressman's constituency, the people that he represents, either a district for a House of Representative member or an entire state for a senator, making him more likely to vote for a bill because he can claim credit for the project. He can claim credit for the project. If you ever wondered why the United States government is so much in debt, part of the reason why is because of these pork barrels being added on and added on to the federal budget. And the sad part is, federal taxes, which is our tax, go on to local projects that we're not ever going to benefit from. So let's say a pork barrel was attached for a bridge in California. Are you ever going to enjoy that benefit? No. no, but everybody in the United States had to pay for it anyway, because they're federal taxes. All right, special rules in the Senate. In order to end a debate, it requires what? To end a debate. Six, two, eight, 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 eight. Uh, to end a debate, everybody has to agree oh, that we should move on and vote. What is, what is that called? Unanimous. Unanimous consent. Unanimous consent. Unanimous consent. Everybody has to agree that we need to move on and go ahead and vote. Stop the debate. Go ahead and vote. If one senator refuses to consent, what is that called? A hold or a filibuster. Filibuster is practiced in the Senate, only in the Senate. It doesn't happen in the House of Representatives. Make sure you remember that. Only in the Senate. In which a senator can refuse to yield the floor to prolong the debate. He can refuse to yield the Senate floor. How do you know a filibuster doesn't happen in the Senate? And the House of Representatives, sorry. How do you know that? Because there's a lot more members. And because there's a House Rules Committee, there's a what? There's a time limit, right? There's a time limit because the House Rules Committee exists. They, they set time limits for, for debate. So you know the filibusters don't happen in the House. This is done to prevent a vote on a bill. What's the intention? To kill it. To kill it in the, with the intentions of killing it. We don't want it to come to a vote so that it doesn't pass. That's the intention of the filibuster. How do you stop a filibuster with a procedure called what? Cloture. How many senators is required? 60 senators is required to stop a filibuster. After a cloture is called, automatically we get to a what? We vote. vote. The filibuster make it more <coughs> difficult to pass bills in the Senate. A majority of how many senators is actually needed instead of 51? 60 senators is actually needed instead of 51. Everybody understanding this so far? Yes. All right, what's the conference committee's job? To combine all the documents. Reconcile the differences between the Senate version and the House version. Just write down whatever it is on your notes. Reconcile the differences between the Senate version and the House version of a bill. Combine them into one bill, one version that both houses hopefully will be happy with. This is the current conference committee. So is and if they're both, the sorry? They're the they Sometimes it's the same when they don't add a lot of stuff <coughs> to it. But most of the time it's different from each other. If they don't like it, what happens? Like if they no, they have, it's not, they can't fail it. They just have to make a new version. So they just keep making a new version until they uh, most of the time, yeah. President's role is chief legislator because he's heavily involved in lawmaking. So we call the president chief legislator even though he's not part of the legislative branch. He still has a lot of influence in lawmaking. Veto can be overridden by how many? Two thirds of both houses. Is it easy or hard? hard? So very what? Very hard, very difficult. So, so I forgot to mention, the President of the United States can also engage in log rolling. How can the President engage in log rolling? In making deals. So I was President Trump, and a bill comes to my desk. 
How can I take advantage of Congress? How can I take advantage of my ability to vote, uh, to veto a law? Veto is very powerful. A threat of a veto can kill a bill before it's born. So how can I take advantage of that so that my agenda also will also be... If I pass this, you guys have to do... If I don't veto this today, when a law that I like gets to you, you better what? Pass you better pass it. <laughs> so if I pass this today, that law that I recommended, make sure it passes. Everybody good with that? That's also the president using his veto power to make deals with Congress. Can president can make deals with Congress. And the president of the United States is unique in that he is also the leader of his party. So right now he's the leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump. And there's Republicans where? In the Senate and in the House of Representatives. So he can use his party affiliation to say, you know what? We're on the same team, so the laws that I want to pass, you better what? Pass. You better pass also. So he can persuade party members in Congress to follow his legislative agenda. <coughs> to follow, follow his legislative agenda. What happens if we have a divided government when Congress and the president are from different parties? And he has less what happens to lawmaking? It's gridlock. So more, a lot of laws are very little laws. Very little legislation happens. That's gridlock also. All right. On your homework tonight, you need to tell me what are the advantages of the majority party when it comes to passing laws that they want to pass and when it comes to failing laws they want to fail. So give me some advantages. Don't look at your notes. Give me some advantages. What's the obvious advantage? They have more what? Power. They have power. Power. Why? Because they have more members, right? Which means more what? Votes. More votes when it comes to passing bills. What else? They're the ones to choose in the House of Representatives. They're the ones to choose who? The Speaker. The Speaker of the House. And why is that an advantage? The Speaker. Has the speaker, speaker, speaker. Yeah. Because he assigns bills to the committee. Make sure that you finish your answer. Don't just say they can select the Speaker. You need to tell me why is this being able to select a Speaker is an advantage. What else? All the committee chairs are from where? are from the majority party, right? And they decide the agenda for the committees. So they, they, um, they can make it less likely or more likely for a bill to pass because they are in charge of committees. What other committee does the majority party control? That is very important. The House Rules Committee. And why is that an advantage, controlling the House Rules Committee? Depending on the rules that they've assigned, they can make it more likely or less likely for a bill to what? Pass. pass. What's the other advantage that they put in there? Uh, that's all of it, I believe. But make sure that you remember how to explain those things on your homework tonight. Sir, where do you put these? The other paper. Oh, the other paper? What does it say? Oh, my God, there's a test. I'll take it on committee. On committee assignments. Committee no assignments. One. They choose who's going to be assigned to which committee. Committee assignments. Uh,